Alrighty, so again, we'll go ahead and get started. If I haven't met your acquaintance yet, I'm Ansley Sutter. I provide all of the social media training and communications with, with Ferrant Media Solutions. This is my most favorite time of the month. I get to hang out with you guys and talk about my favorite topic, social media, and how it relates to our industry, multifamily industry. So I really appreciate you taking the time to join me today. So spring is finally upon us. It feels like winter took forever to move out of the way for spring, but it's finally here. And this is also the time of the year where many brands are evaluating their social strategies in order to target their audience and establish a more heightened brand presence, right? Last month, we talked about how you can use the new Facebook graph search for audience targeting and segmentation. And we will touch on that today if you weren't able to join us last month. But today we will go into some of the latest feature updates and enhancements to Facebook and Pinterest. Both social networks are undergoing both minor and major aesthetic changes right now. And in order to connect with your residents and prospects, you've got to know how to navigate each system, right? Of course you do. So before we get started, just one quick housekeeping tip I always like to share. We're using the GoToWebinar platform today to facilitate our session. And on your Go-To panel, you can ask questions during our session. So this is going to be very interactive. I can see your questions in real time. They'll come in in real time, so feel free to send them whenever. And more times than not, I usually answer your question along the way. But if I don't, I'm happy to follow up with you via email. So before I go over our agenda for today, I just kind of want to explain why we harp on social media every month. So if you're not familiar with FR Social, please get in touch with your for rent account rep. Uh, but for FR Social is a rich suite of tools exclusive to for rent customers only. So we open our webinars up to anyone because we're advocates on social, but this package offering is just for those who are really wanting to sign up with for rent, and we appreciate that. So FR Social is a social media solution made easy. FR Social Expert concentrates on management, advertising, listening, and education. This saves you time and makes it easy for your social marketing. The package includes tools designed to enhance audience engagement and improve your online reputation, which helps drive those leads to you that are so important, right? FR Social positions you essentially to gain a competitive edge by utilizing social media for your brand. This is why we touch on social media, social media each month. This is why we do it. The goal is to onboard and train you on Facebook Instagram, Pinterest, Vine, etc., so that you are well equipped to use FR Social at its optimal capacity. So again, if you are interested in learning more about becoming an FR Social Expert customer, we are happy to have you. Feel free to get in touch with your for rent rep and we can set up a quick demo for you. We're happy to do that. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started with a quick outline of our session. First, let's touch on some high-level stats that speak to social, and then we'll go into some Facebook features that are either fairly new or have yet to be released, including new icons, a streamlined news feed, and mobile experience, which is really neat. We'll talk about a new Facebook, I'm sorry, a new timeline layout, and also we'll touch on graph search that we talked about last month. Next, we will go into Pinterest discussion. Pinterest is the highly visual social media platform, and we'll talk about how it's recently evolved with a new layout and how an analytics with Pinterest have become easier to read and use more than, more than they've ever been before. And lastly, we'll touch on Vine, which is something that will impact our industry significantly. Listen to me when I say that Vine will be the newest thing, the newest app we'll be using in multifamily as far as visual engagement is concerned. You'll walk away with some applicable tips 
and some links that will cover the info I'm sharing. I always like to share and be transparent with where I'm getting my information from. So let's talk about the impact of social media quickly. Take a look at these stats for yourself. 80% of online users prefer, prefer to connect with a brand via Facebook. Close to 80% of companies acquired their customer base from, from Facebook. So these are sitting ducks, you guys. This goes to say that your job engaging with your audience doesn't stop at getting more likes to your page. It doesn't stop there. What are you doing to convert those likes into residents who are renewing a lease every year? I mean, it's great that they like your Facebook page. Let's give yourself a pat on the back. But at the end of the day, we need to affect the bottom line, right? We need to put money in our pockets and get those leases and get to that 100% occupancy that we always reach for every month. Some more powerful stats and numbers to show you are that two-thirds of online users are on a social network. This means you have those sitting ducks. You have a captive audience just sitting there waiting for you to connect with them. Over 800 million users visit YouTube every month, and over 4 billion hours of video is watched every month. That's mind-blowing to me because we all have things to do, <laughs> yet people are watching that amount of time on YouTube. They're spending that amount of time on YouTube. So this is an important stat to keep at the forefront of your mind, especially because we're going to be talking about the impact of video in the multifamily industry next month in May. So keep that little stat in your back pocket. We will definitely touch more on that next month. Now let's direct our attention to the, to the fact that right here, 83% of marketers have said that social media is an active part of their strategy, which that's great. But are you a part of that group? You definitely should be. Why? Because Facebook has more than a billion monthly users and 600, 618 million average daily users. Again, captive audience, sitting ducks, they're already there. So these numbers explain why it's important for your community and your brand to be present on Facebook. But it's also as equally important to know how to navigate Facebook, especially during a time when they're making changes. So how many of you were caught off guard when last year Facebook switched to their page layout to the timeline this time last year? I believe it was in March when they made everyone switch over to timeline. I know we had tons of calls coming in saying, what do I do? How do I navigate this? That's the biggest gripe we get about Facebook is that once you've wrapped your head around a new feature, something always changes. And we're here for you. As soon as new changes take place on social channels that are heavily used in the multifamily space especially, we are on top of it. We're always pushing out new trainings to coincide with the new changes that have taken place on Facebook on Pinterest like we'll be talking about today. So again, if you feel like you are in that panic mode where something has changed overnight and you're kind of like, all right, I'm either going to stick my head in the sand or I'm just going to face it, you have us on your side to help you face it. And more than likely, we're already ahead of the curve. We're anticipating that changes are always going to be happening. So we've positioned FR Social Expert to evolve with Facebook, with Pinterest, with social media in general. Feel free to get in touch with myself as well as FR Social Team if you have any questions regarding any changes. We've seen Facebook move in a more visual direction starting with Timeline, and it's continuing to maintain that visual momentum as it evolves. You'll see Facebook go in a more visual direction as it evolves, and this includes new icons, a custom news feed, and mobile experience, and a streamlined timeline. With this visual push, notable icons just recently underwent a facelift, if you will, as you see here on the right-hand side of the page. The redesigned icons feature Facebook's signature blue color as the background to create a more streamlined, uniform look. So they're all going to be, you know, that white icon with the blue background rather than all this mess and clutter right here. And so for us in multifamily, 
we would need to really focus on and, and know what the privacy icon, the security icon, and the mobile icons mean more than anything because these are the things we're going to be focusing on. This is especially true for you guys in multifamily who are big players in the social space who have made connections via your personal Facebook page, but you're pretty transparent and you share ideas on your personal Facebook page, you'll still want to make sure that you have your security and privacy settings, um, if, especially if you're sharing pictures of your family and there just might be some things you don't want to show. That's just kind of a best practice I can offer you. Also, you see here the Facebook F has a new look. So if you see it out there online, it's not a new network. It's nothing you have to worry about. It's still Facebook, but it just has a more sleek appearance. So the news feed is essentially a hub of information with individual stories compiled of your personal connections like your friends and family and then other stories or posts from brands, uh, from brand pages and, you know, like music you've liked or other brand pages too. So Mark Zuckerberg, CEO and creator of Facebook, allocated a lot of time to this whole news feed redesign. He says that it's one of the most important things they have built because the stories around you deserve to be displayed with more than just text. I always tell people don't post naked. And what I mean by that is don't just push random content or even strategic content out there without an accompanying photo. Social media in general, not just Facebook, is becoming more visual. So we are going to be seeing text more than, we're going to be seeing visuals more so than any text. Because our newsfeed is one of the first things we see, it's seen as a more personalized newspaper. The way we share information and life stories is changing. It really is. I was on the road as of late traveling for work. And this was during the unfortunate events that took place in Boston. And I didn't have time to keep up and watch the news because I was always on the move. So I made sure to keep up with CNN via Facebook and see what, what was being said on my news feed. And that's how other people are consuming their information. Very rarely do we have time to sit in front of a TV or read a newspaper. So this news feed is evolving with the way that we're consuming our information. In addition to seeing your news feed as a compilation of stories, you will have more control of what you see, which is always great. The people behind the scenes of these updates, better known as Facebook developers, are pushing the user experience that we see to focus more on imagery. So you'll see the news feed consists of larger images. Users can now subscribe to different types of feeds, including posts from brands they like, like you know your community's Facebook page. They can subscribe to feeds of their friends and close friends, music, photos, and games. So since we're only on our news feed for a short amount of time, another new feature is the ability to read your feed in a chronological order. This means Facebook is not going to play stories in an order according to what it thinks you'd want to see, which oftentimes is never on the mark. It's not always accurate. So we can choose how we want to consume our information via our news feed, and more than likely we'll want to see it come in chronological order. So quickly take a look at this chart you see here in front of you. In the past two years, we've seen an increase of stories accompanied with a picture. This means it's essential to have images do the talking for you so that you are capturing your resident and prospect's attention when your content lands on their newsfeed. If they see text by itself, you've posted naked, they're going to keep it moving. You want to have some type of engaging image to capture their attention. So let's talk about the multiple streams for a moment with Newsfeed. You're probably thinking, multiple streams, what does this mean? You know, how, Newsfeed, what is that? Are we eating a newspaper? What's going on? It's okay, folks. I'm here for you. I'm going to break it down really, really quickly, very easily. 
so we can talk about how we're going to be consuming the news feed in the future and in the most recent future, actually. So as of right now, when you click the home button in the upper right hand corner of your Facebook page, which would be here next to your little Facebook icon, you your news feed will show in a variety of stories by your friends, brand pages you like, including music pages, retail pages, real estate pages, etc. It's all going to come in one big mess, which you would see down here. More times than not, it's not going to show, it's going to show stories in random order, which is something that we have never liked. It's really, you're wanting to see stuff come in chronological order. And this is where your newsfeed is, really. You just click newsfeed again, it's that whole jumble of information. It doesn't allow you to segment and, and sort by, you know, the topic you want to, to really explore. With the new newsfeed redesign, though, Facebook users will now be able to select their feed on information by topic. Right now, again, we can't do that. You can review your feed by most recent, which is really where everyone is going to be. The differentiating factor from present day is that it's going to come in in real time and chronological order. You can also view your streams by who you're following, meaning like big players like Alicia Keys, um, you know, other type of uh, big high profile individuals. And then you can also filter by, you know, your close friends and any other lists that you've made. Again, you can't do that right now. Most people will choose the option to stay in the most recent feed, which is what I showed you here. And that's what you see at the top. This means the most recent stories are going to come in, again, in chronological order, which we do not have yet. So for those of you using FR Social, your content that you're posting to your page can shine if someone is reading their news feed at the time or close to the time you've posted. So when you've posted your content in real time, if you're using that calendar icon that allows you to post into the future, or if you're using the auto post tool we have for you, these are all ways that you can get more exposure to your page if someone, more than likely they will be in the most recent category. For us in multifamily, our content has several places it can be seen. So this whole new redesign is a great opportunity for us. We don't hate it. Again, your content will be discovered if someone is in the most recent feed. If you're being visual and sharing your photos, your content has the ability to be shown in the photos feed. So if someone is moving away from most recent and going to photos only, your content will still be there if you're sharing a photo. Um, these are all ways that we can get our content in multifamily out there. So make sure that you're doing both. That way your content will show in the most recent and in photos. With the news stream and music stream, these are great places for you as if you're a personal Facebook user to go so that you can see what's on tap as far as popular news stories and music artists so that you can use that content to engage with your audience. These will give you topics to talk about, you know, like the Alicia Keys and Adam Levine collaboration. I don't know what happened, but obviously it was a big deal. These are things that people, your audience, your prospects, your residents are talking about. Remember, your content shouldn't be so self-serving. Talk about things your residents and prospects want to talk about. Current events and music are two topics that are certain to get conversation going. So make sure that you are using this whole filter of, of multiple streams so that you can go to the music stream or you can go to the news stream and see what's being said that you can open conversation on your community's Facebook page. According to Facebook's fourth quarter financial statement, this year was the very first time in the company's history that the number of mobile daily active users surpassed the number of users checking Facebook on the web, meaning on their desktop. So again, people consumed their Facebook uh, content via their smartphone more so than they did via their computer. Now, with smartphone and tablet usage on the rise, 
it shouldn't come as much of a surprise to learn that people are using mobile devices to stay connected with Facebook. Like I mentioned, I was on the go. I had to consume the whole Boston event and all the other news via my Facebook, um, via, via my iPhone. So people are doing the same thing. Needle, needless to say, the newsfeed design was inspired by mobile. So the desktop newsfeed takes a significant cues from the Facebook mobile apps for phones and tablets. So adding a new side navigation bar gives you more white space. So you're going to see all of these mimic um, what mobile's doing. Again, understanding what that more users are accessing Facebook from a mobile phone or mobile device like an iPad or tablet, Facebook is focused on making the overall experience more consistent regardless of the platform. So regardless of if you're on a mobile phone, if you're on your desktop, if you're on a tablet, it's going to look the same. And this means that residents and prospects are included in this group of mobile users. And we're always finding new ways to make FR Social mobile friendly. So this is, this is again, because we're seeing that resident prospect behavior, they're wanting to be connected with and engaged with on their mobile device more so than any other device. So moving on to timeline, Facebook has also started rolling out updates to personal timelines. So moving status updates and posts to the right hand side of the page while placing your information and apps to the left. So if you have started using the new timeline, it's going to give you a walkthrough of your new about section, your timeline, how many friends you have, where your photos are going to live. So make sure you sign up for the new Facebook timeline because it's, it's user friendly enough to give you this whole walkthrough, which is great. Uh, also, the new timeline navigation swaps places. So this is just um, an overview of my timeline because, again, it's not yet available for brands. Um, but this is good for you to know because, again, you can't know how to navigate Facebook in general if you don't know how to navigate your personal Facebook timeline, right? So what you may see on your Facebook timeline if you've made the switch is, again, the navigation swaps places with the ads that currently reside on the top right. So your about section here is going to get a whole new like widget-like type spot below your profile photo. So it's going to give you like your job description, where you went to school, where you're living, you know, where you're from, who you're in a relationship with. And these are all things that you can choose to show or, or keep private and hidden. So again, that's up to you. But your, this will all live in your About section. It's going to be now on the left-hand side of your page. So the new look kind of reverses the whole two-column design that Facebook introduced back in 2011. And it's going to replace it with a more simplified single column um, that allows you to scroll your feed of photos and status updates. So user posts and your life events will be on the right-hand side. So yesterday, I actually, um, for Rent, sponsored a webinar with Multifamily Insiders where legend Doug Chasick spoke about that. So I actually posted a picture of the webinar via Instagram. And as you know, Facebook owns Instagram, so my content from Instagram automatically pushed to my timeline. So again, life events, someone gave, wished me a happy birthday, life events and everything are going to live on the right-hand side of your page. Whereas your friend section, your photos, all of that, your about section is going to live on the left-hand side. So again, this is really essential for you to know because with Facebook changing all the time, it's just always good to be in the know and have your, your eye on the ball. Like I said before, as of now, timeline for brands will remain the same as far out as the layout is concerned. If there are any changes, again, we will let you know and we will have a training available to onboard you with whatever you need to do to make sure that all of your information is being shared with the new layout. So again, as of right now, everything cover photo, profile, your about section, your apps, everything's going to be the same.
for brand pages. Another place to get some more exposure uh, once the news feed is available is by creating events. Resident events are so important, but we have we often have a hard time promoting them, right? I know that there are many of you out there who have some great events, but it's just really hard to get people to come because you don't really know how to promote them. And your grassroots efforts will only get you so far. So use Facebook. It's a great platform in which to promote your upcoming resident event. And when the news feed becomes open to everyone, your event will display in the event category of the news feed like the ones you see here. Your residents and prospects can actually click join. That way, new people coming to this event will see the, the icons of the people who are coming. So they'll be able to see who's going. And again, it's promoting that whole level of connectivity. Another cool thing about when people join is it, it pushes it to their network. So it's going to show on their uh, timeline when they join this event. So this is a great way to capture um, people to invite them to your event and promote resident events via your Facebook. So like I said last month, if you didn't sit on our um, graph search webinar, Facebook as of late <laughs> is all about these waiting lists nowadays. I feel like it's almost like a VIP club, like what's this all about? But again, Facebook is all about these waiting lists these days. And I know of a few people who just have recently gained access to graph search. So again, I'm not quite sure what the algorithm is for who gets early entry, who doesn't, but the news feed it has its own waiting list. So that you'll definitely want to join the waiting list. And all you have to do is go to facebook.com forward slash about forward slash news feed. You see here that there are no spaces. So make sure that you get on that list. I've, I took a screenshot. I've already joined the list. So this is going to tell me I've already joined the list. So for you, you'll just want to click this and, it, and then you're good to go. So that way you'll know when you get the new news feed, you'll see that it's a different user experience and it'll actually walk you through um, once you are on the list and once you've been given access. So again, make sure you write down this URL so that way you can get on that list and be ahead of the game. So if you weren't able to sit in and listen to last month's webinar, we talked about Graph Search and how it's going to impact the way both prospects and marketers conduct research. So in short, Graph Search places connections first offering a custom user experience. It's location uh, based. It's location based, meaning it's serving your prospect geo targeted results, meaning my connections. I'm go I typed in, you know, apartment and condo buildings my friends like. It served me up 15 places. And these are all places my friends either live at or like or both. So again, it's going to give a unique user experience per person because it's basing it on your connections before it's basing it on the actual um, content, which is great. Because again, it's going back to that whole user experience of people are more likely to want to interact with the brand if they know one of their friends co-signs it and, and likes it. It's also going to help with purchase decisions, knowing that my friend Dana is living at this apartment community and she loves it. She likes the page. So I'm more, than, I'm more likely to want to have a tour of the property or have a walkthrough and more likely I will be signing on the dotted line because I know that I know personally someone who's endorsing this brand. So the, the same thing goes with the whole reasoning behind graph search. It's basing its results off of levels of connection. So what this means for you is this means heightened brand, brand page discovery for your community, which is great, <laughs> and segmented search capabilities with filters for the prospects so they can actually drill down a little bit more, creating a more custom search experience. So if you want more information on graph search, we have some trainings coming up in May. So make sure you sign up for those and connect with your uh, for rent account rep to give you that URL to our training calendar. Um, and also make sure you visit the FR Social Training Portal. They can direct you to that too. And all of the recordings of our past events are hosted there. So we have an hour long presentation on Graph Search. Okay, so we're going to transition to Pinterest now. And let's talk about Pinterest for a spell, shall we? And you know, what's not to love about Pinterest? 
online users are more likely to engage with brands if the brand posts pictures versus any other type of media. Again, we're on this whole visual social media train. We're not getting off. Pinterest is basically visually all visually based. The main way to connect with your audience via the use of pins and sharing your, your information from the web or generated from your camera. So again, you can share pins different types of ways, but again, they're all visuals. What's really interesting is that Pinterest accounts for 80% of household purchases, and advertising and marketing studies show that the final purchase decisions are made by the woman, whether she's single or part of a family unit. This is nothing new. Women really do make the final purchase decisions, whether they're, again, single or part of a family unit. And what's more eye-opening is that one in five of these women is on Pinterest already. So there's that huge opportunity for you to captivate your audience. Again, we have sitting ducks in Facebook. We have sitting ducks in Pinterest. You can have conversations with them and really expose them to a brand, but on a more humanized, personal level. Because who doesn't love sharing ideas about home decor? Again, we're not being so self-serving within the Pinterest space. We're sharing ideas and great visuals of ways that people can dress up their apartment home. Pinterest is retaining the and engaging users two to three times as, effic as efficiently as Twitter so not only are people signing up for Pinterest, they're actually staying and using the platform daily. And I'm not going to give you guys, um, I'm going to give you guys some resources that we can use for better Pinterest optimization later on, but studies show that a call to action pin description sees 80% increase in engagement. So make sure you're sharing those call to actions with your pinning. Um, so as of a year ago, the average user spent 97.8 minutes on Pinterest. This is a huge amount of time to have a captive audience considering how short our, atten our attention spans can be online. The magic of Pinterest is that there's so much content for every niche group and every demo that demographic that there's something to occupy everyone. So we'll quickly talk about Pinterest's new layout. The network has recently undergone some great new changes aesthetically, so we'll go over those now. And if you're not on Pinterest yet, there's no longer a waiting list. So you simply go to Pinterest.com and you're brought to this screen. So either way, you're either going to have to log in or join Pinterest. It's very easy to navigate to. And once you're up and running, you're going to see that the size of pins display much larger than they used to. The new width is, if this matters to you, <laughs> 735 pixels wide, which was recently or formally 600. So we're amping it up 135 pixels. So again, we're trying to engage a little bit more visually than ever before. This allows you, you, this allows your highly engaging pins about apartment decor or even multifamily topics to shine more than ever. You see that I've found um, some pins that were multifamily related. So again, it really just depends on what audience you're catering to. It's even fine if you want to have, uh, you know, a marketing or multifamily board and then you can, so that's facing, you know, your B2B audience. And then you have a home decor, apartment decor board that's going to face your B2C audience. You can do all that stuff through Pinterest. Your categories within Pinterest are now located in the top far left next to your search box. So they're going to be here. And these categories allow you to search on a broader topic of scale of topics. So you can search, type in, you know, an organic search or type in, select one of these, and it's going to pull up all the pins regarding gifts or regarding art. So these are all topics you can really drill down. You'll see also um, a new red pin it button in the upper left hand of each pin. 
So this is going to actually be right over your pen. We just removed it so you can see a little bit better. With this, you have the ability to comment after opening the pen as opposed to previously. And no longer can we leave comments on the home or category pages. And people never really did that anyway. So that option was probably removed due to just a, a low user adoption. So Pinterest is like a huge online bookmarking tool or kind of like an old school marketing bulletin board or old school bulletin board for any topic. The visual pins always will come from a site or a place of origin. So if you see a pin you like and you're wanting to click to that originating source, you have the option to go to the direct source by clicking the website button next to the like button. So that's right here. So again, you can, previously you would have to click the actual pin and be taken to the originating source to the website, but this is just more user friendly. You can actually click the website and it's going to take you there as well. Pinterest is also serving up additional pins that are similar to the pin you're currently on, which would be this one. So we're circling back to sentiment analysis. Remember we talked about that last month and how social sites are starting to monitor consumer behaviors and purchase patterns. So it's monitoring that, all right, we're kind of liking to talk about multifamily and apartment and how we're not pushing apartment complexes. Those are about buildings. We're really wanting to create communities. Those are about people. So it's going to show, serve up all of the pins that really are going to talk about that and it's going to share that this is Hillary Day's pin, whoever you know she may be. It's going to show you that these are more of her multifamily um, you know, topics. So navigating your settings and managing control is easier than ever before. You can go to your name or your brand's name in the upper right hand corner of your Pinterest page and select settings here. Once you've done that, you're brought to your settings page where you can configure your settings and add your website URL, any of that stuff, excuse me. You can specify your gender, all of that type of stuff. Also with settings, you can now turn on and turn off real-time notifications that push to your uh, inbox every time someone repins your pin, every time someone likes your pin follows your board, comments on your pin, um, joins Pinterest from any of their social networks. It's very, very intuitive. So again, these are all notifications that will push your inbox in real time. You can turn them on or off. With Pinterest settings, these are options that have your Pinterest activity pushed to your Facebook page and Twitter account should you choose. So this helps with content syndication. But again, it's totally up to you. What it's saying that is every time I pin, it's going to um, push pins to my Facebook page should I choose. Right now, I don't want it to push to my timeline, so I've selected to turn, to turn that off. But I have the ability to log on with both my Facebook page and my Twitter account. So again, you have these several ways to connect via Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest and have your content syndicate to all these networks at one push of a button. Also, Pinterest has introduced a new side best known as Pinterest for Business, which would be really great for you guys who are already have a, a Pinterest account personally, but are wanting to create a community-centric business account with, with Pinterest. And with this, you have access to learn the basics on how to pin from an SEO search engine optimization standpoint, which really helps your Google ranking and all that stuff and marketing perspective. So it's going to, again, going to help you from an SEO search engine mark optimization and marketing perspective more so than a personal uh, level. And you also have insight to case studies of brands and verticals who are making their mark within the Pinterest uh, space. So these are all great assets you can use if you join as a business. Also web analytics, analytics excuse me, are at your fingertips so that you're able to better monitor the impressions 
in reach of your pinning activity. So analytics for business are the bread and butter that really affect the bottom line. You know, with social, we always have such a hard time of, you know, indicating to our higher ups why social is so important because they want to see hard numbers. They want to see concrete movement. They want to see upward movement. They want to see growth. But really, previous day with social, it was really hard to explain that this was a great thing. This is why we need to be putting our marketing dollars here. With Pinterest, Web Analytics will deliver that for you. If you're having someone you need to report to, if you're having someone who's a little bit more traditional, hasn't really jumped on board the social media train, but you have, and you're full speed ahead, this whole Pinterest Web Analytics will definitely help you out and help convey the value that social networking really can drive to your social strategy. You can actually export a report on a, you know, a time frame. You can type in the time frame. So remember we talked a, a while back about Facebook Insights and how you can create um, insights reporting on, you know, your Facebook activity, meaning, you know, the, the people talking about you score or your virality score. Pinterest is now doing that as well. You can actually customize the dates. So it's going to show you how many pins you got within that time frame, how, how many pinners, um, how many repins you received. And again, you can export that report and serve it up to, to your higher ups desk so that they can see the concrete um, analytics and results. Analytics are also useful when you're needing to track how many impressions you're getting uh, via your pinning activity, how many impressions your pinning activity is garnering. And this is essential when, again, you're trying to get to know your audience and boost your engagement. So these are all ways that uh, analytics can help your brand. So here are some Pinterest resources that you can use in addition to analytics. I'm not going to go through all of these due to time, but these resources will give you insights on data and engagement trends with your users. So one of our favorite resources at For Rent is Pin Alerts, which is here. And these are going to happen when you, it's going to send you those automatic email notifications. Well, as of late, again, like I showed you, Pinterest is now serving those up, so you can choose to get them directly from, from Pinterest or use Pin Alerts. Again, it's up to you. So this will serve up really just more analytics that you can pinpoint and really just drill down according to what you want to have hitting your inbox as far as reporting goes, all that type of stuff. It's really great for monitoring. So let's quickly hit Vine. Again, we're going to talk about Vine and video in general next month and how it pertains to social media strategies. We'll talk about that stuff in depth, but I just want to get you acquainted so you have a better understanding when we talk about it in May. It's not going over your head because we've already touched on it this month. In short, Vine is an app developed by the folks at Twitter which allows you to shoot, create, and share six-second videos. You can actually tell a whole story in the six-second six time frame, which shows us that we have the ability to digest these micro-stories. Since the app launched, users have created innovative mini-docs and brands are finding clever ways to advertise and promote contests, and really just tell their story. So if you've checked the stats on any videos that you've posted to the internet, you'll probably see that most people aren't watching the entire video. And does this mean your video isn't worth watching? Well, not necessarily. Video still goes a long way. We have FR video as part of our offering, so it's still important, it's very important. But people have, a short, have short attention spans. So for that demographic or for that audience that can't go to YouTube if they're on the go and they don't have a computer in front of them, Vine is perfect for you. You know, why do you think Twitter has become so popular? No one would have thought that restricting communication to 140 characters would in turn increase communication at such an astonishing level. So 
Design is the video equivalent. So I'm going to show you how properties are using Vine really quickly so we can click out of here real quick. So I'm going to turn on my volume here. And this is how an apartment community, uh, the, the Laurel MX, is using Vine. So it's literally taking just a shot, shot, shot of what this apartment um, unit looks like, which is great. We don't have, again, we don't have a lot of time. Some people don't have time to go to YouTube. YouTube is a great format. Again, we have FR video. But if you're on the go, you can still consume the video via your YouTube app. That's perfectly fine. But Vine is a great place to go if you're wanting to do something in a shorter amount of time. Again, here's another unit. So they're, they're showing different floor plans, which is great. They're showing um, visuals, what you're going to see out of the window if you were to move in. These are all things that a prospect can consume in six seconds. Here's another one where it's showing landmarks and great restaurants around the apartment community. I mean, this doesn't take a rocket scientist. It's very, very easy. These are all ways that you can be utilizing uh, Vine for your benefit. So let's get back into the deck here. And I'm going to mute this video so you can hear me a little bit better. Okay, so again, Vine is really great to use. We'll be talking about it a little bit more next month, but I just kind of wanted to show you how you can start using it. Maybe you could play around with it a little bit more, so that way when we do talk about it next month, you can come to me with some more questions. So what you can do today, you're probably asking, with all this information, what can I do today? Well, always we will promote that you take the visual route whether you're on Facebook, Pinterest, Vine, obviously we can't get away from it. Brands saw a 46% increase in user engagement with the new business timeline, according to Simply Measured. HubSpot reposts that photos perform best for likes, comments, and shares as compared to text video, which in links which something we've talked about in in past webinars. So obviously taking the visual route would never hurt you, but it would help you. You can also engage with your audience on more than one channel. Make sure that you have a strong brand presence on both Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, or Vine. And again, all these platforms now connect to one another. Vine owns Pinterest, I'm sorry, Twitter owns Vine, Facebook owns Instagram. You can actually syndicate your content from Pinterest to all of the networks. So these are all integrated. Make sure you repurpose your content. Um, you know, this news feed won't be, won't be any use to you if you're not utilizing your content from Instagram and pushing it to your Facebook feed. If you're not utilizing um, your content that you have available to you in the post and link dashboard with FR Social, if you're not using it. So again, repost your content. And then monitor your Pinterest analytics if you're going to be present on Pinterest, so that way you can get to better know your audience. Like we just did today, we dipped our toes in the water with Vine. These are all ways you can kind of introduce yourself to any new social network. Just by playing around with it, come to us. We always are wanting to learn more about social networks, and we usually are on the, on the brink of knowing about it before most people just because that's our job. So we're always going to know a little bit more, and we can always pass that information down to you. So with that being said, I'm going to push some valuable links to you now. I'm going to chat these with you. And these are links that you can use. If you look up in your chat box, you will see those. You can pull those. And we'll actually share these in a follow-up email to those who registered and attended the webinar. So you'll have these available to you if, you're not, if you can't copy them down now. Um, but these are just a, a whole great infographic of the whole Pinterest redesign. So all of the shots you saw me take came from this, and it's on Mashable. Another great walkthrough video uh, is of the Pinterest web analytics. So if you're needing to wrap your mind around it a little bit more, 
you can do that. And then really go to this whole link that I just shared with you, which is that apartment community that's sharing their floor plans on Vine. This will really help wrap your mind around why we need to be using Vine and what we're going to be talking about next month. So while we're at it, we have a few questions that have come in. Um, so let me pull up some of these questions and feel free to chat in any, in any of your questions right now. This is a great time to do it. We had a question come in that um, someone asked, what is the, what, a, what as a rental slash leasing, bu leasing business should, should we pin on Pinterest? That's a great, great, excuse me, my voice is all over the place today. Great, great question. What we're seeing is, a lot of people in our industry are creating pin boards that are B2C facing, meaning peers in the industry, so like marketing, best practices, stuff like that. Then we're seeing people in our industry pin um, B2C facing, meaning their audience, their residents, their prospects. So we're seeing a lot of people post pins that relate to DIY blogs because, let's face it, if you are a prospect and now a resident, although you are living in your dream apartment home, there's still rules and regulations like you might not be able to paint the walls a certain color or you might not be able to add hardwoods in your floor plan. Like these are just things that as a resident you're going to have to come to terms with. But that's not to say that you shouldn't be proud to live in an apartment community that's proud to have you. So we're seeing a lot of apartment communities post blog posts and like from apartment therapy or we have our B2C facing blog which we suggest you go to and repurpose the content. We just are promoting a moving moments contest. So feel free to push your residents and prospects and repin from our Pinterest account. We have a Pinterest account that we we would love for you to repurpose our content. We welcome it. So search apartments for rent on Pinterest, and you'll see kind of things that we are doing within the B2C space that you can adopt. Again, decor um, pins, which are really great, you know, like a, like a DIY headboard that's easily removable. These are all things that a, that a resident can really use to make their apartment floor plan or their apartment their home while keeping in constraints with, you know, the rules and regulations you've set. Another great pin board to create is an introduction to your staff. This really helps humanize your brand. So if you are wanting to put a face to the name so that your prospects and residents are more likely to, you know, say, this team is great, I know so-and-so personally, take a headshot of your team, write a quick little bio description of them, and, and pin it, and use, the, your, use a community-centric hashtag. These are all things you can be doing. Another great pin idea is to promote different type of events that are happening around your neck of the woods. You always want to establish yourself as the hub of information where you're located. So I'm from Atlanta, for example, and I have a few properties that are doing a great job of pinning different events like in Centennial Olympic Park. I believe it's every Friday. Um, there is a free concert going on. So they can pin events like that, newest restaurants in the city. If there's any cross-marketing um, opportunities, cross-promotions opportunities, like if you're having a Red Bull rep come to your apartment community, you could pin that. Definitely pin resident events. This is great. Again, if you're wanting to take, pin your, um, or post your resident event via Pinterest, via Facebook, and then repurpose it on Pinterest, you can do that. So we actually have a Pinterest 201 uh, webinar that we give. We'll be giving that in May. So make sure you get with your for rent rep and they can direct you to when that webinar will take place. And I'm going to give over 10 examples as to how you can pin in the multifamily space without being so self-serving and how you can cater to your residents and prospects. Okay, so we have another question that came in that asks, what is the best place to manage multiple Facebook page analytics? So I always like to, to really just hone in on the whole Facebook Insights dashboard. As of right now, you're going to have to go from page to page level. I'm not quite familiar, and, and if any of you are, feel free to chime in as far as a dashboard that allows you to look at multiple Facebook pages. 
um, at a glance. We have the great reputation management offering that we at For Rent offer that lets you really hone in on your insights. And what this does is the social tab within reputation management allows you not to only see your Facebook insights, but it's going to um, partner that up with your Facebook insights. It's going to show you your, your Twitter insights, and it's also going to show you your Foursquare activity. So as of right now, I don't know of a platform that allows you to see multiple Facebook pages, but definitely go to Reputation Management and hit that social tab. You can see all that information there, and then if you go to the Insights dashboard within that Facebook page. So if we don't have any other questions, I'm happy to leave it and put it at a full stop here. Again, if you have any questions that come in after the fact, feel free to contact me via email. I am at ansley, A-N-S-L-E-Y, dot Sutter, S-U-D-D-E-R-T-H, at forrent.com, or contact any of our experts at frsocial at forrent.com. Either way, we will make sure we get to you. We really try to endorse that we have great customer service, and we try to keep it as as great as we can. So we really want to make sure that you connect with a person whenever you contact us because that's such a big deal. So on behalf of Front Media Solutions, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to chat with you next month about how we can use video, Vine, and other video, videography platforms and how they pertain to your social media strategy. So make sure that you join me on May 16th next month. That's a Thursday, and we'll make sure that we can chat with you and make sure you get um, trained up on Vine. And if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to contact me. I'd love to have a conversation with you on Vine. So again, on behalf of Front Media Solutions, thanks so much for joining me, and have a great day, everyone. Take care.